one of the two. Whoa, honestly. Wait, I want to see what streak I'm going on. 11, okay. Once I get the hang of this thing, I kind of go off with it. Holy dude. Hello gamers, now that the G3 finally got its buff, I'm going to be showing you how to use this absolute majestic gun. A lot of people still don't really like it, but I want to make sure that you guys know if you want to use it, how to use it because it's pretty difficult to use. Let's start off with a loadout. For optics, it's really personal preference. You could even put a high zoom optic like, I don't know, uh, an ACOG or something, but that suits a very different playstyle, which I will talk about that playstyle. But for the playstyle that I would recommend for this gun, you're going to want to have something very low zoom like a delta or reflex i don't even recommend a coyote because this thing has a lot of recoil and that's going to make it feel a little bit more inaccurate next up you're going to want to not use any of these three compensator maybe i do recommend muzzle brake just to bring down this thing is insanely all over the place havoc device probably not worth muffler probably not worth muzzle booster no no probably not <laughs> worth loudener uh, might make this sound cool but I would really recommend you use like a muzzle brake, maybe a compensator, muffler if you really need to, but this thing would shoot, it would be slower shooting than the AG3, so not worth. Next up for grips, you might want to be using folding grip or stubby grip, and those are grips that people like to use a lot. Pistol grip, maybe. I would recommend angled grip because angled grip seems to be the best on the G3 and the AG3. A lot of people have already talked about this. I won't go too far into it. The angled grip is what I've been using for a while, and personally, it fits me the best. You could use chain saw I guess but I wouldn't really recommend it for other ballistics tracker maybe not ACOG scope for canted maybe because uh you could put the canted ACOG and switch between them and use your low zoom and then tap fire in LRC canted ACOG this is one of the few times where I might actually recommend it otherwise just a laser of any kind I use tri laser just because I have enough kills for it hollow points is not really worth it because you lose a lot of headshot multi and that's what makes this gun really really good tracerless is whatever silent is whatever AP on the other hand is probably not worth it because you get a little bit more armor penetration you get 2.2 studs instead of 1.5 studs which is a pretty big difference not super noticeable but maybe worth it however you're losing your 40 damage max range it's going from 60 to 30 studs which is going to be a really big downside i don't really recommend it so overall my personal loadout is delta muzzle brake angle grip tri laser and no ammo you could use whatever you want but that is my personal preference. For maps that you're going to want to use this on, I would recommend really any map. You could use this on any map. I've used it on Desert Storm. We're getting Warehouse here, which is nice. I like to use it on Warehouse just because it has a decent amount of pen, and you can tap fire an LRC, so even Dunes is somewhat manageable. I'll show you how. Honestly, kind of a DMR. So let's actually just go over here so I can show you the recoil. As you can see, the recoil of this gun is just bonkers. It is manageable, you can hit things in LRC, but from that far away, this is where you're going to want to use your tap fire ability. For automatic ranges, I would say like 150 studs maximum. See, even from there, I'm able to hit stuff, but past that, it's going to be pretty hard, so I wouldn't recommend it as much. So maximum range is probably like here. That's where we're going to be able to effectively hit stuff. All right, let's say that you're shooting at something from this far away. Now, this is where the tap fire comes into play. You're going to want to, every time that this gun, this gun actually has a really good recoil recovery speed, which allows you to actually tap fire it really, really fast and still be very effective. So this is probably the fastest you can shoot to be super effective. And you can also go like this a little bit faster, but then you're not going to be quite as effective. You can also just go for like, make sure it's completely back, but really I'd go for like, like that. I tagged that guy three times, he should be dead. So yeah, because of this thing's automatic firing mode, you can shoot this thing very, very fast in CQC and not have to worry about clicking fast because it's a battle rifle, not a DMR. But you can use it as a DMR, which is just what makes it very, very effective at all ranges. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit hard to use, but let's look at the stats in just a second because I want to show you just what makes this thing strong because there's a lot of stuff that do make it really strong. Nice grenade, by the way, random guy. 
So let's look at the stats. First off, this thing has a minimum time to kill of 0.1 seconds, which is, I guess that's true, but it doesn't matter. The torso multi is actually pretty good at 1.1 times, but the headshot multi is what makes this thing insane. It has a two times headshot multi, limb damage 40 to 30, torso damage 44 to 33, and headshot damage 80 to 60, which means if you hit headshots, it can two hit to the head all ranges, and you can kill with one limb, and one head or one torso and one head very, very far, like at least 100 studs. The muzzle velocity and pen, like I said, are good, and the suppression is actually very high. It's 1.3, which is just insane, considering it does shoot pretty fast. But yeah, those stats allow it to do some really hard damage, but only to the head. Other than that, it performs basically just average and is really not deserving of its high recoil except for those headshots, which is what sets it apart. So if you're not hitting headshots, this thing isn't actually that good. But the second you start hitting those headshots, this thing is gonna be next level powerful because two hit all ranges, not even the AG3 can do that with two headshots. Basically no other gun in the battle rifle category, not even the ECR can do that all ranges. It also has a very good three hit range now, way better than it was before. But overall, I have another video on the G3 that tells you basically the buff, what the buff actually did. You can go watch that. The fact that you can use it like a DMR in LRC is just like, it just makes it so much more versatile, unlike a lot of battle rifles, which kind of fall off like the ECR. The ECR, you're not gonna be able to use in range. Like it's not gonna work, except the G3 is like nearly as effective in LRC as, as it is in CQC, which is just like, Jeez, man, that's that's actually epic. And it can also four hit limb all ranges. It can almost three hit torso all ranges. It does 33 damage per torso hit, which means that it does 99 damage with three torsos, which it's that sucks. So unless you hit headshots, the AG3 is kind of just better. The headshots pretty good. And even without headshots, it does shoot faster and have better reload and handling. I couldn't really tell you which is better between the AG3 and the G3, like it's very up to personal preference, but in my opinion I like the G3 more. I said this in my other video, you should watch that because it kind of kind of just details the stats more of the two. This is how to use this gun. And as you can see, yeah I gotta do some reloads and stuff. You know, that's every battle rifle dude. If you don't like reloading a lot, you probably shouldn't use a battle rifle. It only has 20 bullets and the reloads kind of suck sometimes. Whoa. Honestly, with 1.5 studs a pen, you can really go for penetrating some walls with this thing. Wait, I want to see what streak I'm going on. 11, okay. Oh. Once I get the hang of this thing, I kind of go off with it. Dude, I keep getting recognized in videos. Yeah, that's more or less how to use the G3. Remember, the recoil kind of controls itself. You might need to pull down a little bit at the beginning, but other than that, it's just let RNG decide or tap fire. If you use the automatic mode, you might not hit shots, you might hit shots, it does, it's RNG, like RNG basically decides. But if you tap fire, you rely on your aim to be really good and you better be going for headshots because this thing won't be as effective unless you hit them. But once you get a hang of this thing, it is a joy to use. I love it because people hate it. People just don't like this gun at all. And that makes it really fun because I never really see that many in game, which means I get to feel special. But yeah, if you guys are enjoying this kind of video, I really like explaining how guns work videos because if you didn't know, I started off my channel doing gun review videos. Oh, I ranked up like, Wow, that, that looked sick. Now I can just be like, talk live and talk about the gun because I hate doing voiceovers and I was like, I'm not doing voiceover videos anymore. I've done a couple since I stopped making them. Yeah, if you guys are enjoying this kind of video, please make sure to leave a like, comment. What do you want to see? What guns do you want to see? Because M231, I did that. G3, also kind of hard to use, and I did that. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed, I want to see those comments. What guns do you want to see? And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.